Well, hey guys, get excited because in this video, I am going to be reviewing for you all some sunscreens that you have sent me. You guys are so nice. You send me different sunscreens to my PO box. I'm so appreciative of that. You definitely do not have to send me anything. It can be super expensive to ship them to the US. I'm really appreciative of that. So I'm excited to update you guys on these that you have sent me. And the first one is a Korean sunscreen, Beauty of Joseon, which is a brand I've tried many of their products and I really like them. Their cleansing balm is a favorite for sure. Now this product, I think is actually a reformulation of their prior sunscreen. They added some more UV filters. It has uh, iscatrizinol, biscatriazole, Uvinol A+, and Tinosorb S. Now, I think you can actually purchase this either on Stylevana or Yes Style. So I will see if I can't find it on either of those sites and I'll link it down below. Um, this particular sunscreen has niacinamide in it, which is anti-inflammatory and can help with redness, discoloration, oiliness. Now, this particular sunscreen doesn't leave any white cast on the skin, and the consistency is very nice. It's moisturizing, it's fast absorbing, it's not greasy, it's not oily, it doesn't leave the skin shiny. In terms of the consistency and how it looks and feels on the skin, it reminds me of the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel that I reviewed for you guys a while back. So if you like that, I think you will really like this. Now, this particular sunscreen is not water resistant. So if you're gonna be outdoors doing sport or you're gonna be swimming, I would suggest not using it. But it is really nice and moisturizing, so it's a great everyday sunscreen. It's SPF 50. It doesn't pill on the skin. And I think it would layer really well under makeup. This product, for me personally, did not cause any burning or stinging on the skin, and I was able to comfortably wear it around my eyelid, you know, my upper eyelid, lower eyelid, all around the eyes, without it running into the eyes and causing burning. There was no stinging or anything. So I really like this. Highly suggest checking it out and I really like the way that it looks on the skin. Now, next up is a sunscreen I've talked about before, but I've never actually tried it. It is the Evie Sunscreen Mousse SPF 50. I talked about this in a video on why you need to reapply sunscreen, but if you're not familiar, this is a sunscreen made in uh, Sweden, and it has some great UV filters. It's got Uvinol A+, which is great for UVA protection, octocrylin, avabenzone, tinosorb S, and Uvinol T150, and it also has has sodium ascorbyl phosphate that is a form of topical vitamin C which actually has been shown to possibly be helpful for people with acne um, but it doesn't it doesn't have the data behind it like ascorbic acid does in terms of improving collagen synthesis anyways that is in there this product is water resistant in fact this brand claims or suggests that this will not come off with like sweat, friction, rubbing. So they kind of imply that you don't need to reapply it, which I have reservations with that recommendation, just because we know, first of all, people don't apply enough sunscreen to begin with. And one of the goals of reapplying is to get more sunscreen compound on your skin. So I don't agree necessarily with that recommendation from this brand. And when it comes to their water resistant claims that you know, you wouldn't necessarily need to reapply it. I don't feel comfortable with that. Regardless, it is an interesting texture. It is like shaving cream when it comes out. In fact, it kind of weirds me out a little bit. I didn't mind using this on the body. I really liked it a lot. I used it, went in the pool. And one thing I observed with this is that other water resistant sunscreens when you put them on and then you get the skin wet, you can see the water beating up on the surface of the skin. I didn't notice that with this, which I thought was interesting. I find it a little odd in terms of, it just kind of weirds me out a bit to be using a mousse consistency like this because I feel like I'm putting shaving cream all over, which I know I'm not, it's just kind of a, a mental game. But uh, it's not greasy, however, it is a little bit sticky. So I enjoyed using this to my body. You also can use it on the face. Truthfully, I find it a little bit difficult to apply to the face. It just was kind of hard to tell how much do I need to apply to get a good layer. I didn't feel like I had a good grasp of that. Because when you just lightly press on the pump, you get this big balloon of foam. And I just didn't feel like I had a good grasp 
of the actual quantity of sunscreen that I was putting on my skin. You know, you're supposed to use roughly a quarter of a teaspoon uh, to the face of like a lotion or a cream sunscreen. Some people do the three finger length method. I've talked about these in other videos on how much sunscreen to apply, but with the mousse, I really felt like I didn't know, you know, what I was doing. I was concerned about skip areas and just inadequate coverage. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the application. Do you feel like you get a good layer? Cause like, honestly, when I was putting it on, I would feel like uh, some areas, like I didn't have anything. And then for the face, it does feel kind of sticky on the skin, but it looks good. There's no cast. It's, it doesn't pill up or anything. It's not drying. It's not particularly moisturizing either. It's just kind of, a, you know, there. While I really like it, personally, I don't feel very comfortable applying it. I just feel like I'm not getting adequate coverage or I just don't have a good grasp on the quantity needed. And like, for example, how much sunscreen is in this bottle? Like on a per weight basis, it's just really hard to to have a good grasp of that. You know, that's also one of the limitations as a side note with sunscreen sprays. So it's really hard to say, to, to gauge how much sunscreen you're actually getting on the skin and sprays are prone to under application. So given the issues that I had with, under, with feeling comfortable that I was getting enough on the skin, plus their kind of marketing suggesting that you don't need to reapply it, I just don't feel comfortable that you are getting enough on the skin. Let me know in the comments though what your experience with this one has been. All right, number three is, it's La Roche-Posay's new Uvimune 400. You guys, this is innovation in terms of sunscreen. I'm so excited about it. It's their new UV filter. All right, it's got a really complicated name, methoxypropylaminocyclohexenolidine ethoxyethylcyanoacetate. It's a really long name. But this new filter is so cool because um, I've commented on this in other videos where I talk about sunscreen and sun protection and how UV damages our skin. But you guys know there are two main parts of the sun, uh, sun's UV rays that damage our skin. There's UVB, which is what is largely responsible for a burn. But the majority of UV from the sun that reaches our skin is actually UVA. And historically, sunscreens were not very good at protecting from UVA. They've gotten much better. Um, and specifically, the really, really long, long wavelengths of UVA1, one part of the UVA spectrum, that penetrate really deeply into the skin, there's actually kind of a gap in coverage of those. Like sunscreens don't really block that. The filters in sunscreens around the world, at most, block up to 370 nanometers. They lack coverage in the 370 to 400 400 nanometer wavelength of UVA1, whereas this new filter actually covers those, hence the name uh, Uvimune 400. It's kind of referring to the ability of this filter to protect from those long uh, wavelength UVA rays that go really deeply, suppress our immune system, really contribute to skin cancer. So it's got that new Jazzy filter, which of course is not approved for US, for US uh, use, unfortunately, and probably never ever will be. That's just the way the FDA rolls, um, which is really sad for reasons I'll get into in a moment. It's got Uvenol T150, uh, Uvenol A+, those are great. It's got Tinosorb X, and it's got Mexoril SX and Mexoril XL. Those are fantastic filters. Uh, and it's got avabenzone, which avabenzone, y'all know, is not uh, stable. It requires other ingredients to stabilize it. But all of these other filters that they have outside of the US, like throughout Europe, Canada, um, and Asia, they those uh, these new filters they help stabilize avabenzone, so it, it allows the avabenzone to to work much better. Okay, so this sunscreen, let's talk about the way it looks. It looks great on the skin. There's no cast, absorbs really, really quickly. It's not greasy. I love this. Like, I love it so much. Um, and, I know they also make it in a fluid consistency, which can be more lightweight. I really like the cream. I would encourage you to get the cream. It's free of fragrance and it's moisturizing without being 
greasy. It does have alcohol denaturing in it, but it's not drying at all. Water resistant. When I complain about it not being approved for use here, some people mistake that as me saying it's banned here. It's not banned, but the US has a very, very draconian bureaucratic process for approving new filters for use in sunscreens that can be sold in the States. Because of that, we almost never get any of the, we're, we're never gonna get any of these new filters. It's just too, too many hurdles. We'll likely never see these ingredients in our sunscreens here. I know I'm being pessimistic, but it's just the reality. So the, the reason that's so sad is because this new filter really offers the potential to help out a lot of people who have uh, sun sensitive skin diseases that are specifically sensitive to UVA rays. Uh, people who have polymorphous light eruption, for example, likely could benefit from this new filter. People who take medications by mouth that make them very sensitive to the sun, the sensitivity is that UVA. This is probably arguably one of the most powerful anti-aging products on the market right now, this Uvimune suns these Uvimune sunscreens, because of the innovation for protecting against those longer wavelengths of UVA that really contribute to accelerated onset of skin aging. It's also a great ingredient for people who deal with hyperpigmentation. I mean, it hasn't been studied in people with hyperpigmentation, so I shouldn't speak prematurely, but it has been examined on human skin and shown to block some of the UV-induced uh, biologic endpoints that lead to accelerated skin aging and suppression of tumor surveillance. So this is, this is innovation right here. I'm really excited about it. Thank you so much for sending it to me. If you can get your hands on it, I highly suggest it. I haven't tried out the other products with this ingredient. Like I said, they've got a fluid that's like the Shaka fluid. Uh, I think it's shock of fluid reformulated with UV immune, um, which I imagine is pretty good. I really like the hydrating cream. I really like it. Uh, no pilling or anything like that. Able to tolerate it very comfortably around the eyes. Doesn't run into the eyes, burn or sting. Definitely check that one out. So this is a brand. Uh, you were sent me a, multiple sunscreens from this brand and I have tried out so far two of them. So I'm gonna review them for you. The brand is Hello Sunday. Looks like this is made in Spain. And these sunscreens are vegan, cruelty-free. All right, so they've got this SPF 45. It's called the one that's a serum. This one is a chemical sunscreen. There's no cast. It's got Insulazole, which is a UVB filter, octocrylin, Uvenol T150, avabenzone, and tinosorb. So some of the filters that are not approved for use in the US. It also has sodium ascorbyl phosphate. That's that form of vitamin C that may be helpful for people with acne prone skin. It also has gluconolactone, a polyhydroxy acid that's moisturizing, really helpful for skin texture. It's very, very mildly exfoliating, but not irritating. It's got hyaluronic acid, a humectant that can help with hydration. This product I would think of as like a daily moisturizer with sunscreen. It's pretty moisturizing. It is not water resistant. So this is not a product you would want to use like if you're going to be doing sport or anything like that. It's a, it's a fluid formula. It's very moisturizing. Um, I'm able to tolerate it without any burning or stinging, but it did run into my eyes a little bit as the day went on and I did get a subtle kind of burny, blurry eye effect. This is very good. This is pretty good though. If you are looking for a nice daily moisturizer that has sunscreen, I would suggest this. It's great. The one thing I will point out is the product suggests adding some drops of it to your moisturizer for added SPF. That is misleading. Um, I would not dilute out your sunscreens into your moisturizer. It will impact how the product protects you. So I would not suggest doing that. And they kind of mention that on their brand, on their packaging. I would not do that. Uh, but this is a product I think you would enjoy if you're just looking for a daily moisturizer with sunscreen. It doesn't pill. I think cosmetics would go on over it just fine. All right, so that's that one. Let's talk about the mineral one. This is a mineral sunscreen that's tinted. So it's got zinc oxide and titanium oxide to protect you from UVB and UVA rays. It also has a tint which comes from iron oxides that we have come to learn uh, may protect you from 
blue light that comes from the sun and drives hyperpigmentation in people with medium to deep skin tones especially. And I say may because it really all boils down to the overall formulation. Since brands don't actually quantify blue light protection in any way, I can't say for sure that this will protect you against those rays, but it does have the iron oxides in it. Um, free of fragrance, and it has sodium hyaluronate, which is humectant. It's got carnosine and tocopherol, which are antioxidants. So that's what's in it, and that's what it, it should help with. But I have to say, for me personally, this was an epic fail. First of all, very difficult to spread on the skin without it being super streaky. Second of all, the tint, this isn't a bad thing necessarily, but the tint is very, very, very light. So it might be a good option if you have very pale skin, you're looking for a tinted sunscreen. For me personally, this actually caused some irritation. It dried out my skin. I hear from you guys a lot of times that mineral sunscreens, you know, some people find them drying. For me personally, I've never really had that issue, except with this. This is so drying for me, for my skin. Could not handle it. It was uncomfortably drying, like pulling tight. And after I took it off at the end of the day, my skin was very sensitive to putting on moisturizer. I don't know what it is about this product. If it's simply the drying effects of the formula, you know, the mineral sunscreen is just, just drying. And I don't know, it's probably a me specific issue too. Maybe if you have very, very oily skin, you'll be doing just fine with this. You might actually like it. So I don't wanna blow it off completely, but for me, it is definitely a no-go. It's just too drying, and I don't have dry skin. This reminded me of my experience with the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. So I had a very similar outcome with that. Irritation, dryness, burning sensation, and I don't know if it's just something about both of them, that for me is a, is a no-go. So if you like that, you might actually like this. Although I did find that this product was difficult to apply without it being looking streaky. Uh, it, it took a lot of time. It was difficult to spread onto the surface of the skin. So for me, it was a fail and I, I can't tolerate it. All right, you guys, so those are the five sunscreens that you all have kindly sent to my PO box. Thank you so much. You don't have to send me things. I know it's expensive to ship this kind of stuff to the US, so I really, really appreciate it. Of all of these, I would say for me personally, I have mostly been enjoying the Beauty of Joe San Juan as a moisturizer for day-to-day -day use. I adore this. This is my new holy grail. Last year, my sunscreen favorite of the year was the Event Intense Protect, and I still love that. In fact, one of you guys sent me a bunch of bottles of that, so I'm good with that. If you'll recall, that particular product, which I'll link down below, um, is also a great option because it protects, it has a new, newer filter that protects from blue light uh, from, that comes from the sun and can trigger hyperpigmentation for deeper skin tones. This one is unique in that it's got a new filter that protects against those long wave UVA wavelengths that are really a, a key driving force for aging the skin and skin cancer that up until this new filter, we really didn't have uh, anything to adequately protect from. So I really, really love that. The EV sunscreen mousse, I just feel uneasy and uncomfortable using it. I am enjoying the Hello Sunday, the one that's a serum as a daily moisturizer but the mineral one is a hard pass for me. Let me know in the comments if you have tried any of these, what your experience was, but if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.